Hi, welcome to lesson five, part two. This is the water and air temperature experiment. We are going to try to collect some evidence to help us understand how the temperature of an ocean current can affect the temperature of the air above the location that it passes. So some of the things that you're going to need for this lesson are something to write on, something to write with, someone to talk to, but there is actually a couple of other pieces of equipment that if you have them at your house, you can join with me as I do this experiment. Okay, so you'll need a couple of cups. I'm gonna use foam cups, but if you don't have those, and probably you don't because they're not legal to sell in Seattle, but you could use a mug um, with some foil over the top. I have two layers of foil just to try to keep all of that warmth inside. So mugs work really well for that. Also, we're going to need some lids over the top of our cups. So I have some plastic cups here with the thermometer right in um, the bottom of the cup and the cup's just upside down so that I can measure the temperature of the air inside the cup. If you don't have two thermometers, it's actually fine. You can do one experiment at a time, but you'll need cups with lids and thermometers. Okay, so let's get into our experiment. The investigation question that we're trying to answer here is how do ocean currents affect the air temperature of the locations they pass? So if you look here at our picture, we can see that those gyres that form in the ocean, some of them are carrying warm water and some of them are carrying cold water. And how does that affect the temperature of the air above it? So we're gonna conduct an experiment to try to discover that. So this is the, the setup that we're gonna use. Mine's gonna be slightly different. It's gonna look like this instead of the picture that you see on the screen. So I'll set that up. And um, we're gonna to try to figure out how the currents affect the air temperature. Okay, here's the setup. We are going to take one thermometer and put it into a lid. Like I said before, I'm using a plastic cup, I've drilled a hole in the bottom so the thermometer can be suspended in the cup. Then we're going to take one of our cups, this one's labeled cold water and this one's labeled hot water. And we are going to place the thermometers on the cup. The cup is empty. We're just going to measure the temperature of the air in the cup. So we'll place those both there. Then we're going to record our initial temperature of the air in the cup. Initial means beginning. So what does it start as? So the temperature of our cold water cup is 22.1 degrees Celsius, and the temperature of our hot water cup is 22.2 degrees Celsius, so they're slightly different. So then what we'll do is we are going to record that, um, you can use a data table. A data table like this one here on this picture would be great. You could just record that in your notes. Um, we just wanna know what the initial air temperature is and also the final air temperature of both the cup with the hot water in it and the hot water and cold water. Okay, so once we have placed the hot and cold water in each of the cups, we will set our timer. I have a timer here for two minutes. I'm just gonna use my cell phone to measure that. And then we're going to record the temperature of the air after two minutes has gone by. Now that we've recorded the initial temperature, let's go ahead and add the water. So in the cold cup, I have some cold water right here that I've just put into a little bowl with a spout so it's easy to, to pour. And we're going to fill this about halfway. And then I have my hot water. Make sure we don't mix up our thermometers. And the hot water and my little tea kettle. We're gonna pour it to the same height. Okay. Okay, I've got my timer ready. I'm going to place the lids on. There we go. And hit start. And then we'll come back to this um, after two minutes have gone by to see what the temperature change in the air might be. But let's just take a moment to talk about what the temperature or what the water represents. So in our cold water cup right here, the cold water represents a cold ocean current and the hot water in this cup here represents a warm ocean current. And the air that's in the cup rep just represents the air that is directly above where those ocean currents are going. 
you'll notice again that the thermometer is not touching the water. We're not measuring the temperature of the ocean currents. We're measuring the temperature of the air before the, uh, the water started flowing. And so both of the cups started at about 22 degrees Celsius. And so after a minute has gone by, then we will look at that one more time. While we're waiting for the experiment to be going, I just want you to always keep in your mind what this is all about. What is the evidence we're trying to collect? Okay, so let's see what our results are. Okay, the timer's going off. Turn that off. Okay, so let's take a look at our results. So um, the thermometer, Let's zoom this out so that you can see it too. Okay, so, oh, it's gone to sleep. Let's put it there and we'll turn this one. Oh, that one's there. Okay, um, I hope you can see that. Oh, dangerous, this is hot water. Okay, so as you can see, the hot water one is at 46.6 degrees Celsius. That's a huge increase. And the cold water one is at 17.9 degrees Celsius. So let's take a moment to record that in our data table. So as we can see from the data that we've collected, the temperature in both cups changed. In the cup with the hot water that was added, the air temperature went up quite a few degrees Celsius. And in the cup where the cold water was added, the temperature went down quite a lot as well. So let's try to figure out what this means. What happened to the air temperature in the cup where hot water was added? Um, and there's three choices that you could make. So I want you to think about this, maybe pause the video or talk with your partner. Do you think that the air temperature increased? Did the air temperature decrease? Or did the air temperature stay the same? So in order to answer this question, we would just need to quickly look at our results. The cup with the hot water added started at 22.2 degrees, but after two minutes, it had risen all the way to 46.6 degrees. That's an increase of about 24 degrees Celsius. So we can say with confidence that the air temperature increased when the hot water was added. So what does that mean about the energy? If the temperature goes up, we know that the molecules of air are moving faster and have more kinetic energy. So we could say, what must have happened to the energy in the water and the air? So the energy in the air we know increased because the temperature increased. Now, this next part is tricky because we didn't take the temperature of the water before and after, so we can't say if the temperature went up or down. But what we know is that it's a closed system, that all the energy in the system has to stay in it. Energy doesn't come in from somewhere else or go out. So if the temperature of the air was increasing, we know it was getting that, that kinetic energy from the water. And so the water was transferring energy to the air, which means that some of the energy in the water is now in the air. So the temperature and the energy amount in the water actually went down. And so we can see that if we had measured the temperature of the water before, we would have found that it was colder after two minutes than it was when we started because some of the energy transferred to the air. Now the same exact thing is true for the cold water. The cold water started at 22.1 degrees and dropped down about four degrees Celsius to 17.9, 4.2 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the air above the cold water decreased by four degrees Celsius, then we know that the energy level went down as well. Some of the energy, the kinetic energy in the air, transferred to the cold water. The temperature of the cold water and the energy of the cold water would have increased slightly because energy can't be created or destroyed. It can transfer from one object to another, but it can't just disappear or go away. So what we learned from this experiment is that the air above hot or cold water can change temperature. So we're gonna take this evidence and see if we can use it to help us understand how the air temperature of a place might change if a warm current or a cold current were passing by.